Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to take a look at different ways that you can control the velocity of MIDI recording. So this has been prompted by uh, a viewer's question and we're just going to take a look at a few different ways of doing this, uh, some of which will actually answer his question, some of which will probably be in and around that question. Setup is pretty simple, we've just got a Halion Sonic setup with Verve playing a little simple piece of piano because then I'll be able to play it live later on when we need to do it during recordings. There's nothing other than inept playing here. And as you can see, I've made the velocities uh, deliberately, of course, uh, up and down a significant amount. So this is a pretty erratic part in terms of dynamics. So let's take a look at the different ways that you can control the velocity of something that you've got in MIDI, starting out with doing so in the editor. So here we are in the key editor and the first way I'm going to show you how to control the velocity is to enter it in the info line. So you may well know that if you select a note, you can open it up in the info line and then put the value in. So here I've changed that to 50. But if we do it with multiple notes, so if I just select all of them with control or command A, if I type in value here, so let's say I'll put in 60 just to change that value. What happens is the relative velocities are retained. So you can see they're not all at the same velocity and that's not what we want. What we want to do is get everything to the same value. And that is easily done, but you need to know what the keyboard shortcut is. So if you, again, select the notes you want, type in the value, but don't press enter yet. So let's go to 50 and hold down the command key on Mac or hold down the control key on Windows as you tap enter. Now you can see they're all fixed to the same velocity. So that's the first way doing it via the info line. So the second way I'm going to show you to get all these velocities to the same value is with the line tool. So this is available on the toolbar here, or you can shift and right click or two finger tap and then pick it here from the menu that appears. It's got different modes, but the one we're looking at is line. So that's the one we're interested in. And then you can just pick your value. So let's pick 67 and then go along, get to 67 again at this end or thereabouts. And then once you let go, they'll all get set. Now this is useful if you weren't aware of this tool. Obviously this is useful for doing things such as ramps. So you can ramp your velocity up and down and you know, all those kind of things you need to do, particularly with snare drum fills and so on, that kind of thing. So the line tool is really useful for doing changes but you can also use it to fix everything and i'll be honest before i started using the info line back in the dark dark days i used to use the line tool all the time for this kind of thing to uh, correct my still erratic playing as as it as it now is so maybe i need to spend more time practicing the keyboard but anyway that's the line tool so that's the next way of doing this so for some time cubase has had improved controls over things that are happening in the controller lane at the bottom so this area here and if you have multiple things selected you get this highlighted area here and importantly you get these handles so these can allow you to alter it in useful ways so this scaling is useful because it can allow you to reduce those differences so if, if you want to reduce them to zero you just click on it a couple of times and drag down and then once you've got that, you can get them to the actual value you want with this square handle at the top. So you click and drag that, and then you can pick the value that you want. Now, this, of course, gives you the option of just reducing the amount of difference there is in what you've played. So if you think, oh, you know what, I want it leveled out, but I don't want it totally eviscerated of all its dynamics, then you can use this control here. And then obviously, then you can scale these appropriately. So actually, I find this really useful because often you want to just reduce the amount of velocity difference there is, not just totally get rid of it. But you can totally get rid of it if you just bring this all the way down. So the fourth way we're going to look at is to apply a logical editor preset. So I've got videos elsewhere on the channel on using the logical editor, but the logical editor presets are available in, I believe, all the versions of Cubase. They're certainly available in pro and artist but i think they're also available in elements whereas the full logical editor isn't i think it may even be available in cubase ai etc so 
once you've got your part selected, so make sure you've got it selected in the project window, then you go to MIDI, logical editor, and then apply preset. So if you haven't visited this for a while, this will probably look a bit different because this changed in Cubase 12 and there are a lot of presets to wade through. So the thing to do is to hopefully know what you're looking for. And in this case, it's fixed. If you search, so click up in the search bar and look for fixed. Fixed is what we're after. So fixed velocity 100. You click apply preset. And then you're in business. Now, if this isn't the velocity you're after, then you can use the techniques we looked at earlier to control the velocity. So in this case, you can just select all. So I'll just click in this bottom, select all. And then we can use this handle here to scale these where you want. So while it's a two step process, if 100 isn't the number you're looking for, it's reasonably quick to do that. So for this one, you may need to do a bit of setup because your inspector may not be set up the way mine is on screen. So as you can see, I've got the inspector for the track and I'm just making sure that I've got a couple of things ticked. So I've already got MIDI inserts turned on, but it may be turned off. So yours may look like that, but turn MIDI inserts on like this, but also click the cog again and turn MIDI modifiers on. So we have both those sections available. So in here, we've got these options here. Now, the range is what we're going to look at. So there's actually two ways you can look at MIDI modifiers, which we're going to look at in a second. So here, we're going to pick range, and then the range target is going to be velocity limit. Okay, and then you need to set your maximum and minimum values. And if you want it fixed, you need that number to be the same. So I'm going to, I'm going to set it to 100. So set both of them to 100. You have to set the maximum first. Otherwise, you can't set the minimum because it can't be greater than the other one. And when we play this back, you can see that even though the MIDI here is not at a fixed velocity, it will sound dead flat. So that is fixed in that part there. So as long as this is present, that will be stuck. And you can even save this as a preset, etc. So you can see there's some preset in here, but just fixing it to 100, you can save and then you'd be in business there. Now, the issue comes. Let's just try and record this again. So I'm just going to turn the click on uh, and just play along. Now, you may have been able to hear in the background that I was absolutely hammering on these keys, hence the uh, little errors, etc. So I was just caning this at this point. So you can see I've thrashed the death out of my poor little keyboard, but it wasn't coming out at a high velocity. So what happens here is it gets recorded at the normal velocity, but it's processed through this before it goes out to the instrument or the MIDI output, etc. that it goes to. So using MIDI modifiers is one way to do this, but with this, it's not recorded into the part. So we're going to look at a way that you can do this by recording it into the part and having the velocities actually fixed when you've done them. So MIDI inserts is what we're looking for. So again, just make sure you've got that turned on in this section of the inspector here. And then when you have, you can click here. Now there's a variety of different effects in here, which are probably forgotten about by most people, but there, there is some interest to be had, but we're just going to go straight to what we need, which is MIDI modifiers. And yes, you've already used MIDI modifiers in its own section in the inspector, so you should be familiar with it, but there is a small difference. So if we load this up, you can see same controls as you had before, but they're just in a slightly different way of being presented. And in this range section, which is a little dark on my screen, but you've got range here. And then again, you can pick velocity limit. We can set the maximum. So you need to set the one on the right first. We'll set that to 100. And we'll set this one to 100. So again, we're limiting that velocity. Now, if you did this so far, you would get exactly the same result. In other words, when you record something, it will record with the velocities intact, like we can see on screen here. But it would play back with those velocities limited, in this case, to 100. But that's not what we want. And fortunately, there's a way to record it. And it's this little button here. So this is record output to track. So when you turn this on, this gets recorded. So it's, it's like it becomes a pre-recording stage rather than post-recording. So if we click it up here, I'm going to turn this on. And then I'm going to record again. And this time, you'll see it's recording that to the track. So 
So yeah, I was absolutely hammering it again, hence the little glitchy notes, etc. But regardless of the velocity, so I was playing really, really softly at one point and really hammering it later on. And there you go. It's just recorded that dead flat. So if that's what you're after, recording it like that, then this is the way to go. There is one more way we can look at doing this, which is similar, but it may give you different options. And that's what we're going to look at next. So in the MIDI inserts, I'm going to turn off MIDI modifiers just for clarity. And then instead, in this first slot, we're going to go to Transformer. So this will be familiar because this is the logical editor. This is a logical editor applying in real time, potentially. So again, we can load up the preset we saw earlier on. So let's just load up Fixed. Fixed Velocity 100. Now you may be able to edit this. So in this case, I can edit this value here. So this is the velocity because value two of a MIDI note is velocity. So let's change this to 75 just for a bit of variation. So this will now fix them to 75 and in exactly the same way as we saw earlier on, if you press the record button here, record output to track, then it will get recorded. If you don't, it will just be processed every time you play it back. So you kind of get the same effect, but here you can do this to fix them all. And then maybe you can put in some variation, etc. So I can see the use in that. So let's just try this one more time. Yeah, and absolutely, again, hammering the death out of my poor keyboard. But you can see they're fixed to 75. So that's another way of fixing velocity. Now with these tools here, Transformer, and MIDI modifiers, you have got other options, which may look into in another video, but that pretty much covers all the ways of fixing velocity to a fixed value. So whether by doing it by editing or doing it in real time, so it's just taken care of for you. As ever, hope you found this video useful and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.